Inclusion and vulnerability in everyday school children. Fissures in the educational system by Sue Gutierrez and Marta Garcia San Pedro, University of Oviedo. This video is about how students' inclusion is being addressed in the classrooms, not only from a clinical perspective, but from a social dimension too. First, a shared definition of inclusion is presented, followed by a brief analysis on the origin of educational systems. Then, a reflection on how these institutions and the agents can generate or not school children vulnerability. Therefore, it is necessary to understand what a school was created for and what it is currently responding to. UNESCO defines inclusive education as the process of identifying and giving an answer to all students' individual necessities, promoting the widest participation in learning, culture and communities, and reducing exclusion at the schools. Inclusive education must provide relevant responses to the full range of educational needs, not only at the school, but also in out-of-school pedagogical contexts. Inclusion is seen more as an educational approach than as a set of educational techniques. It has to do with the quality of the learning experience, students' support, students' achievement, and students' full participation in the educational institution's life. Different media, academic literature, and even documentaries and films show this reality to the population. So, hereafter, two different examples will be shown. The first is Ken Robinson's 10th TED conference video about the need of a paradigm shift. In 2011, Robinson pointed out how and what for educational systems were created and organized. The economic, the economic, cultural and social 18th century context established the pillars of the current educational systems and, surprisingly, those same pillars are the forces that determine the educational and teaching system today and, by extension, teacher training. As Ken Robinson tells us in the video, today's school is not updated enough to instruct people because it is totally old-fashioned. Current educational systems are based on the industrial era necessities, when the main aim was to train factory works. In the 21st century, society is no longer an industrial one, but a tertiary sector society, where having a degree does not guarantee finding a job. Nowadays, there is an imminent need to renew and transform schools' functionality and usefulness, and in conclusion, students should be trained for life. A 2020 study by University of Oviedo shows young dropped-out teenagers' trauma. The feelings of these young people during their schooling are ambiguous. They evoke school as a place of oppression where they have barely enjoyed support, understanding or interest. They did not like school since it's not connected with the daily life and seems to have no utility at all. After three centuries, should not be an educational change. Students are including at the school depending on their skills and excluded due to their social status. There are limiting factors linked to socioeconomic reasons and students' motivation 
is clearly ignored. There are quite a few fissures in the current educational systems, but it seems that the most recurrent fact is related to teaching commitment. As a consequence, the teacher figure is deteriorated all over the world and criticized for his lack or her lack training and sensitivity. Hart Greaves and Fulan in 2012 mentioned the imperative necessity of transforming professional teaching culture. These authors consider capital as a set of goods and values related to the teaching profession. Educational authorities should invest in teacher training and qualification to achieve the desired benefits in education. Promote permanent learning and continuous updating to anticipate possible students' problems or needs. Avoid an individualistic approach and turn it into a collegiate and shared task. As a consequence, it should be necessary to create learning communities between inter and intra labor groups. Professional capital is made up of three linked elements human capital or individual talent. Teachers must master their subjects and courses and know how to teach them. Being perceptive and aware of a student's circum circumstances. Social capital is also achieved through colleagues' personal relationships who share their concerns, experiences and learn from each other. Decision-making capital allows teachers to take decisions in a coordinated way and make judgment in situations where there is no formality of action. Therefore, teachers do not expose themselves personally and would be supported by the rest of the teaching team. For all these above-mentioned reasons, professional capital needs to be reviewed and started up urgently. Thank you very much.